earlier this month I'd given a presentation online as part of the foot and ankle pathology basic course being run in Cluj and Apoca in Romania. The, um, the course I'd trailed on my socials and a, and a few of you guys had got in contact with me directly to see if you could see a copy of the talk and the team were good enough to let me have a copy of the uh, the video so it's uploaded here in all its glory um, the Wi-Fi is a little patchy towards the end so right at the end of the questioning my Wi-Fi connection ran out back in sunny Northampton so apologies for that um, it's a brief overview of nerve entrapments and if you've got any questions um, let me know in the comments below thank you so guys I hope you can all hear me at your end thank you for the invitation Christian um, so my name is Ian Riley I'm a podiatric surgeon in the UK I have a particular interest in nerve entrapments of the foot and ankle it's something I see on a regular basis in my practice in the UK and uh, Christian's keeping an eye on the internet because my internet's decided it's not going to play very well today so he's going to text me if my wi-fi goes down and say reload so we'll talk um we'll talk a little bit about morton's neuroma if we can also known as plantar digital neuritis i'll talk about tarsal tunnel syndrome and i'll talk about some other nerve entrapments and i will try and speak slowly um the puts in um, so apologies that I do speak a little quickly on Anglaise and Perodo. Um, so entrapment neuropathy, um, uh, really defined as a, as a pressure-induced injury to a peripheral nerve in a segment, part of a, a nerve in, in its course through some anatomical constrictor or some pathological process. And as, as I say to my patients, it's it, when I, I think a patient has got a nerve entrapment, it's, it's really it's, it's sciatica of the foot in one of its different parts. And all the peripheral nerves of which there are five main going through to the foot and ankle, all of them are subject to an entrapment at various points. Um, in terms of a go-to reference, I particularly like this book. You can find it online uh, now, that's available as a, as a PDF download, as everything is these days. Um, it covers all the nerve entrapments. The, the, the foot sections are perhaps a little hazy, um, I, I might disagree with some of the comments in those, but it's, it's a very good book overall, particularly good at the, the science of the nerve entrapments, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna go through those today just because of time. So we'll start with plantar digital neuritis. So also known as Morton's neuroma, uh, Morton's metatarsalgia. I'm sure a lot of you see this from time to time in your practice. And it's really a, a perineural fibrosis of a proper digital nerve, and it will lead to a fusiform swelling of the nerve. So we think of it being defined as a neuroma, but of course it's not a true neoplasia in terms of something pathological other than thickening of the nerve because of that entrapment. Women more commonly affected than men, um, I suspect because of footwear. And when you look on the internet and you find pictures that show um, where the nerve is entrapped. And I, I'll always say to my students, what's wrong with that picture? And the, the problem with that picture um, anatomically is that nerve's been pinched a little bit more proximally than it really is uh, in reality. So it's shown there being caught between the metatarsal heads. And in fact, the entrapment is more distal usually. Um, and so when I see pictures like that on the internet, I always scream at the screen and say, no, it's more distal than that. Um, so the sensory distribution, when a proper digital nerve splits and goes to either side of a toe and becomes the common digital nerves, and it's typically going to affect the third and fourth. So if I'm being a pedant, then I would say a Morton's neuroma only affects the third, four interspace. And that's the point typically where you're going to get the sensory distribution of the nerves and where you're going to see the patients complain of pain. And they will complain of neuralgic pain between for a Morton's neuroma, the third and fourth toes and um, so that can be neuralgic pain it can be numbness it can be pins and needles paresthesia typically radiating distally typically worse with activity made worse by tight shoes and typically removed by the patient removing the shoe and massaging the foot but it's it's very much a, a neuralgic type pain because it's a, it's a nerve entrapment usually that pain will cause distally but i have seen it cause proximally on occasion as well and i see this in my practice, pretty much every day. So every day I see a patient with a Morton's neuroma. Um, 
keen to differentiate it from other causes of metatarsalgia. So we'll see patients will present with capsulitis, synovitis of a metatarsal phalangeal joint. So particularly the second metatarsal phalangeal joint. It's very commonly misdiagnosed, I think, in the second interspace. Um, I had a patient in yesterday with bursitis, so that can be a differential that's missed, or you can see problems with the plantar metatarsal phalangeal joints or rupture of the plantar plate can also masquerade as a, as a Morton's metatarsalgia, although of course they can be there together. Um, any other nerve pathology can present as a Morton's neuroma, not too common in the forefoot, but I have seen some problems within the tarsal tunnel masquerading as a Morton's neuroma or sometimes see fractures, arthritis of the second toe particularly. And I've even had patients sent through from their local general practitioner with what was thought to be a trapped nerve, but actually ended up being a skin pathology. So this is me doing Mulder's click in a patient. And if, can you just see the... Uh, the third and fourth toe just clunking. So this is a Mulder's clip. This is kind of our classic diagnostic test. Um, so that's what I'll do in clinic in terms of diagnostic modalities. Um, I will nearly always send these for an ultrasound scan. Ultrasound is, is, is kind of my weapon of choice when it comes to referring for a scan. Um, occasionally I'll use MRI, but ultrasound is, is certainly better in, in, in my experience, at least in the UK. So in terms of management, so I think I've got a trapped nerve. Okay, so what can we do? And I'm always keen to try conservative therapies first. So I'll obviously look to avoid any provocative causes. So that's going to be shoes particularly. Um, I'll see subsets of this in uh, golfers, drivers, dancers. People who do a lot of twisting will, will, uh, will often, I think, be the cause of the entrapment. Quite a fan early doors. If I can see a patient and do something with in-cell therapy and pads, I think that's useful. I'm a particular fan of cortisone injections. That's something I've um, spent a bit of time doing. And then ultimately, if there's a failed conservative management, then we'll look to take that out. And ultimately, we actually remove that section of nerve. Um, and I do, well, I do a few of those. Um, I am... Uh, a little bit of a kind of a self-promoter so apologies for that so i've got a bit of a youtube channel and um i've got a few injection videos up on that and I'm also quite a fan of research gate you'll see we've i've got a few publications for the for the injections as well you'll find that on the research gate feed if you've got an interest so ultimately as a jobbing surgeon although i'm not keen to rush to surgery then i will will take these out surgically um, I favour a planter approach rather than a dorsal approach, and I can talk about that at length. And that's certainly why I get it in my hands, my best results. So I've taken about 450 neuromas out and generally get good results. Um, specific reference for Morton's neuroma. Um, I like this paper by um, Thomas et al. It's quite an old reference now. It's what's that going to be 13 years old? Um, it's, um, it's a good American reference from the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons. Okay, I think I've got about 20 minutes, Christian, so I'm just keeping an eye on time. You've not messaged me to say I've dropped Wi-Fi. I'm just checking that I've not lost my Wi-Fi, which is playing silly sods today. So I'm just going to check that you've not messaged me to say, Ian, you're talking to a blank room. No, nothing yet. Okay, tarsal tunnel syndrome. So it's analogous in the foot as it is to carpal tunnel syndrome in the hand. And the tarsal canal located behind and under the medium alveolus becomes the, the tunnel with the bone on top and the flexor retinaculum, also known as the lysigum, ligament, passing over the top. And from the underside of the retinaculum, four septa come down to enclose the three tendons and then the, 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 the neurovascular structures. So the third channel going from medial to lateral or posterior lateral contains the nerve, uh, the artery and the two vena comitantes. And that's where we'll see... Um, the, the nerve end to the foot. Always love a photograph. So we've got the bones underneath and then we can put in some ligaments, put in some tendons, and then the uh, lysiniate ligament, the flexor retinaculum sits over the top. And then the nerve is going to come down posterior lateral to that. And the, the, the tibial nerve, which is really what we're thinking about, can become trapped at any point underneath that ligament. Although I normally find it's quite distal at a site called the portopedis. And that's the 
really the abductor canal underneath the abductor hallucis uh, muscle belly. So I normally find that the entrapment is somewhat more distal than most of the books and the references would have you believe. So in terms of etiology, I see patients who are overpronating. I think that's that's a big cause. Space occupying lesions I'll see from time to time. If there's a ganglion, a lipoma, or some other mass within the tarsal tunnel, um, then that can certainly cause pressure on the nerve. Not too commonly, but I've, I've certainly seen a few. You can see problems within the nerve itself. Um, occasionally I've seen it post-fracture or if there's a coalition in the area. Or, um, one of the things I think is under-recognised and shows up on an MRI scan quite well is if there's a varicose vein pressing on the nerve. But typically, I would say eight out of ten times that entrapment, you won't see it on the scan and it's more distal at the portopedis. And that, that sensory distribution is going to be pretty much the kind of the whole of the plantar surface of the foot. And I see this probably every week. This, I think, is a condition that is underdiagnosed. And I often see it accompanying um, a bad plantar fasciitis. I think compression of the tibial nerve is, is underseen, underreported, underdiagnosed. Symptoms again, neuralgic, diffuse, plantar, medial, sharpy pain, so burning, tingling, numbness, again, typically aggravated by activity, relieved by, by rest. And Tinell's sign of Valet's phenomenon, um, I think get a little bit confused in the literature. So a Tinell sign is when you tap and you get percussion of the, of the nerve and you'll get um, radiation of those symptoms. And lots of people think if you tap on a nerve point or tap on the compression, you'll get a distal um tinels and proximally it would be called valets but that's not correct tinels can go distal or proximal valets is when you press on an area and you've got local soreness and you'll often find that at the portopedis you'll press on that point and you'll get local soreness so that's the valets phenomenon tinels can go either way always go to the original reference Diagnosis, I'm going to look for stance, I'm going to look for overpronation, I'll be percussing the nerve, looking for irritability of the nerve, palpating any obvious soft tissue masses. I've given up on conduction tests, I used to use those routinely, but found that they were uh, less positive than I thought, I got lots of false negatives. So typically, if I've got neuralgic symptoms and a positive physical examination, then I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that and I won't send for nerve conduction studies. Um, I will scan typically an MRI to look for any um, space occupying lesions, but it's typically not. And in later stages, you will see some atrophy of the, the deep musculature, so particularly abductor hallucis, but only really in late cases. If I think there's a bony issue, then I might think about a CT, um, but MRI really is just to rule out a pathology. It's not diagnostic for me. Um, in terms of treatment, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'll, I'll use NSAIDs, I'll strap, I'm moderate fan of physical therapy, fair fan of orthotics, fair fan of mobilisation. What I'm a bigger fan of is injection therapy and a high volume injection. So what we do in our team is we use a nerve stimulator to locate the nerve and I'll put a high volume in of typically a mix of local anaesthetic to block the pain, saline and some steroid. There's a high volume hydro dissection and We've, um, we've written that technique up. You can, you can find that on my socials. And again, ultimately, if that doesn't work, then I'll take patients to surgery. And it's all about releasing the nerve. And although it's not known as the pinky test, that should be known as the pinky test. So I need to get my little pinky down that um, abductor canal. Um, other nerve entrapment. So odds and sods. So, so of the five nerves that innervate the ankle, any of these can become entrapped. So in, in sort of a an order of uh, occurrence, we can see Baxter's nerve. So this has kind of made it big in the last few years. You'll see lots of people talking about Baxter's nerve where they didn't. And the Baxter's nerve is the first branch of the lateral plantar nerve. So supplies the deep plantar lateral muscles of the foot. And you can see an isolated Baxter's nerve compression. It can be part of a tarsal tunnel compression and it can contribute and complicate a plantar fasciitis. And in terms of, I like a picture, so let's go to the picture. So it's also known as the inferior calcaneal nerve, first branch off the lateral plantar nerve. And where the nerve courses is where a heel spur will form. <coughs> Excuse me. So although there's a couple of places where the, the nerve can become entrapped, every time I've seen this, it's been secondary to a heel spur. So if you look on the picture on, on my right, your left, um, you'll see, I don't know if that arrow comes up, but you'll see where the nerve courses. 
is just where that heel spur forms. So this is one of those times where I'd see a heel pain, then I would do an x-ray to check for um, a heel spur. And, you know, if I see a heel spur and I've got plantar lateral neuralgic symptoms, then I'll be thinking maybe backs is in the back of my head. And treatment, again, I'd be looking to do all those um, insoles, in, uh, orthotics, NSAIDs, um, high volume injections and ultimately surgery. Um, less common, again, would be an isolated entrapment of the medial calcaneal nerve. This is the first branch to come off the tibial nerve. It becomes superficial very quickly, so it becomes superficial superior to the lacinate ligament, so is often spared in cases of tarsal tunnel syndrome. Isolated irritation of the medial calcaneal nerve is rare, but you will see the odd one if you see a lot of heel pain, as sadly I do. And again, it will complicate bad cases of plantar fasciitis, so just something to be aware of. Joplin's neuroma, written up in 71, and it was actually written up um, as a complication of bunion surgery where the, the first proper digital nerve was um, caught within the, the, the bunion surgery itself. So is, is now known as, as Joplin's neuroma. And that, that effectively is the kind of the most medial form of a Morton's neuroma. And, and um, it, all the different um, uh, plantar nerves have been written up and eponymously known. So it's uh, Joplin's, Hewter's, Houses, Morton's and Islin's from, from one through to four. Um, don't see it too commonly, but I will see it complicate a bunion presentation because if you have um, a bit of a swollen first metatarsophalangeal joint and the course of the nerve goes there, there's a patient pronate and that joint enlarges, then, then they can irritate that first proper digital nerve. Uh, treatments again, um, insoles, cushioning, and I'll, I'll, I'll do some injection therapy for those. Uh, point of entrapment is usually at that point there. And again, check out my socials, and I think I've, I've got a little video of me injecting a patient there. Um, one of the ones we see less commonly, anterior tarsal tunnel syndrome, which is um, irritation and compression of the deep perineal nerve and the nerve courses laterally in the dorsum of the foot to the dorsalis pedis artery. Um, so the common site for entrapment, the nerve is going to kind of course down and is going to supply the one, two cleft. So over a dorsal arthritic midfoot, particularly over the second tarsal metatarsal joint, if you've got a bony bump underneath the nerve and the nerve courses over the top, the nerve is liable to compression at that point there. And um, if you get neuralgic symptoms radiating and supplying that area, then have a suspicion that the, um, uh, the, the dorsalis pedis nerve is caught. Sorry, deep perineal nerve, excuse me. So most vulnerable over the top of the foot, usually due to midfoot arthritis. That's probably the most common cause that I see, but can also be down to a tight footwear, maybe for patients being in a cast for a time, but typically it's gonna be um, dorsal midfoot arthritis. So in terms of some pictures, um, here's a picture of me on the left. You can see me injecting a nerve and um, it's actually two separate patients. Is it the same? Oh no, same patient, excuse me. So I had a Tinel sign where the nerve was caught over the second tarsal metatarsal joint. And then that was the area of tenderness. So we tapped on the top of the foot, but the pain felt, patient pain felt pain distally. And I'm just injecting that with some steroid and if you look very carefully, you can see I've got very thin gloves on. You can hardly see them at all in that photo. Um, rare again, um, uh, superficial perineal nerve can be caught and is written up by Henry in 1945. So Henry's mononeuritis, I have a handful of those cases. I probably see it most commonly following an ankle sprain or an ankle um, arthroscopy, but you will see an isolated idiopathic entrapment as well. So just to kind of keep you guys on to time, because I think it's probably lunchtime over in there in, in Romania. So in terms of um, nerve entrapments to foot and ankle, uh, so I think they're really common. I see it, I see it one or more every day in my practice. I think they are underdiagnosed. So when you have a patient that presents with a neuralgic type symptoms around foot and ankle, just have a nerve entrapment at the back of your mind as a suspicion which means you need to know your neuroanatomy and where the cutaneous distribution of these, uh, these nerves is. 
Think about Mawson Jerome, which is the most common that we will see, and the presentation of that is anterior to the metatarsal head, especially three, four. All the nerves are entrapped or, or are subject, excuse me, to compression and entrapment too. So again, anytime you see sharp shooty pains around the foot and ankle, just have that as uh, one of your differentials, or even if it complicates another pathology, um, particularly plantar fasciitis. A um, couple of links to the socials there. Uh, Christian, I don't know if we're able to take any questions, which hopefully will be or uh, Anybody has questions? Yes. yes. I'm interested in um, uh, injection, injections therapy uh, for Morton's neuroma or for, I don't know, um, Baxter's. Um, <clears throat> do you perform only with... Um, um, which high is the high volume? How that, much that, uh, you? Bit, bit yes, um, and uh, always me. with uh, cortisone, only cortisone. Um, thank you. Good. So, good question. So, for a Morton's neuroma, I'll typically use um, Depamedrone is my favorite for soft tissues. I, I find it's a little kinder to the soft tissues. Um, normally with a, a degree of local anesthesia for, for a diagnostic uh, point of view. So a fairly low volume injection, typically one milliliter of injectate in total. Um, and I'll repeat that two, maybe three times over the course of the year. I sometimes do that with ultrasound guidance, but usually not, it's an easy injection to do, but I've probably got ultrasound confirmation before I inject. For a tarsal tour, um, then I find that high volume has been the, the, the injection technique that's worked best for me over the last few years. So I do a combination of, guys, can you still see me? Yes. Hopefully you can. Yes. Cool. My computer did a funny thing then and I'm, uh, um, uh, I've had that situation before when I've been speaking to dead, dead air on Zoom and it's, it's very slightly embarrassing. So for um, tarsal tunnel, so I'll typically use 20 mil of injectate as a minimum. So that will be typically 10 mils of local anesthetic and 10 mils of saline. So I could use total local anesthetic, but then that's quite a big volume of local anesthesia. Um, and if that was obviously in the wrong area, then you could have some potential side effects because of that. So I typically I'm using a, um, a high volume as a hydro dissector. So I'll use some local anesthetic, but not total. And then the local anesthetic breaks that pain cycle. So I think there's a benefit there. And I use a little bit of cortisone as well. So I'll use that for tarsal tunnels and, and Baxter's, but also medial calcaneal nerve as well, lower volume. Typically I'll use um, a nerve stimulator to Ah, the joys of Wi-Fi. So I have a very patchy Wi-Fi connection at work and I was um, um, pretty much every five minutes I was texting Christian directly via phone to say, Christian, am I still online? <laughs> am I still online? I've done a couple of talks in 2020 and 2021 where the connection's gone and I've been talking to thin air, which is uh, never quite as funny as you would imagine. So apologies for the Wi-Fi and also apologies for the slightly croaky voice tonight as I'm just doing the sort of the edit and the overview of this. I'm just back from a, a week skiing in sunny France and managed to pick up my um, son's cough and cold. So, um, yeah, I'm sounding a little bit the old Barry Whites, but um, hopefully you enjoyed the, the video. Real area of, of interest of my nerve entrapments, and I could talk about each one of those um, specific entrapments at length. Um, so, as I say, drop me any messages and I'll catch you again. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, and a quick point of order. My remaining colleagues had just put me down as a doctor, assuming that I was as, as such a medical doctor. Uh, regular viewers will know that I am doing a research doctorate at the moment. So hopefully sometime during the year, I'll be able to use that title um, accurately. So apologies for that error.